Hello everyone. So in this video, we'll be discussing derivative interpreted as a slope. So basically, this is just a continuation of what we have discussed from the previous session, which is the derivative using long method derivation. So this derivative interpreted as a slope still uses the same steps in finding the derivative using long method. However, in this discussion, we'll be discussing how to find the slope. So we have here the equation of the line, which is y is equal to mx plus b. So we'll be using that in order for us to find the slope, which is our m. So it says here that m will be equivalent to delta y over delta x. So when we try to assess this one, we, ha we can apply the, the steps in finding the derivative. So let's say y plus delta y is equal to m times x plus delta x plus b and then in order again the steps is to move or to isolate delta y so we'll be moving y to the other side so we have delta y is equivalent to m x plus m delta x plus b minus our y which is this originally so we have m x plus b so m x plus m delta x plus b minus mx minus b. So as you can see, we can cancel some terms and this one as well. So what we have left here, we have delta y is equal to m delta x. And again, the next step is to divide both sides by delta x. So we have delta x, then delta x. As you can see, delta x, m delta x divided by delta x is just m. So that gives us m is equal to delta y over delta x. So that gives us this. Okay, so that is how the slope is equivalent to the delta y over delta x. So let's try to find or let's try to solve some examples that is related to the derivative interpreted as, as a slope. So we have here, find the slope of the line at point 1 and 3 that will pass through the curve y is equal to 3x squared plus x. So in this case, again, we have to assess our equation first before we move on to finding the slope. Okay, so we have y is equal to 3x squared plus x. Again, we have to follow the steps that we, that we have discussed in deriving using long method derivation. So we have y plus delta y is equal to 3 x plus delta x squared plus x plus delta x. Again, y will be replaced by y plus delta y and the x's will be replaced by x plus delta x. And then isolating our delta y, moving our y to the other side of the equation. So we have 3 x plus delta x squared plus x plus delta x minus our y. So we have delta y is equivalent to, let's expand the binomial. So we have 3x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared, that is delta x squared plus x plus delta x. And then we have to subtract the value of our y, which is 3x squared plus x. So we have 3x squared plus x. So we still have to simplify this further. So we have 3x squared, just distributing our 3 to the inside of our parentheses. So we have 3 times 2x plus delta x, 2x delta x. So we have 6x delta x, 3 times delta x squared, that is plus 3 delta x squared. And we still have here plus x plus delta x. And then um, distributing the negative sign to the inside of the parentheses. So we have negative 3x squared minus x. Okay, I believe we can cancel some terms because 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0. x minus x is 0. So what we have left now is 6x delta x plus 3 delta x squared plus delta x. Okay. And the next step that we have, if you can still remember, is to divide both sides by delta x. So we have to divide both sides by delta x. 6x delta x is just equivalent to 6x. 
3 delta x squared divided by delta x is just 3 delta x. Delta x divided by delta x, that is 1, right? So, we now have this one. And if you can recall, the last step is to approach the limit of our delta x to 0. So, we have delta y over delta x as limit of delta x approaches to 0. So, we have 6x plus 3. Delta x will be replaced by 0 because, again, we need to substitute the value of delta x by 0. And then, we have the 1. So, what we have left now is delta y over delta x is equivalent to 6x plus 1. So, in finding the derivative, this is already our derivative. However, we are finding the slope, so we are not yet done with the problem. Okay, if you can remember earlier from the previous slide, m is equivalent to delta y over delta x. And as we know, delta y over delta x is equivalent to 6x plus 1. So, we have m is equivalent to 6x plus 1. And in order for us to find the slope, we need to... Um, substitute the points that we have here. 1 is the x, 3 is the y. And from our equation, we only have the x variable, so we can only substitute the value of x or the point of x to our slope. So we have m is equal to 6 times 1. Again, 1 is the value of our x plus 1. So that being said, m is equivalent to 7. So, this is now the slope of our problem or, or our equation. So, this is already your final answer. Okay? I hope the discussion was clear. Anyway, let's have some another example. We have here find the slope of the curve at the given point. So, we have this curve. And we have this point as our given. As you can see, y is already squared. So, we still have to assess that one first. y squared is equal to 4x. We need to find the y. So, we have to square it both sides in order for us to remove the squared in our y. So, we have y is equivalent to square root of 4x. Now, doing the steps all over again, we have y plus delta y is equivalent to 4x plus delta x. So, isolating our delta y, we have square root of 4x plus 4 delta x minus our y, which is equivalent to square root of 4x. So, I'll just write that directly. So, what we have left is this one. Now, as you can see, these are subtractions of radicals. And in order for us to normalize the radicals, we have to multiply with the conjugate. So, if you can recall the discussion of this one from your math plus, so you can, uh, you will know how to multiply with the conjugate. So, in multiplying with the conjugate of our radicals, we have to have square root of 4x plus 4 delta x, and the opposite sign of minus, which is plus, square root of 4x, all over square root of 4x, plus 4 delta x, plus square root of 4x. So again, square root of 4x plus 4 delta x plus square root of 4x all over the same value, this is basically just equivalent to 1. So, when we multiply 1 to our equation, that just has no bearing. So, that's why we are multiplying that with the conjugate, so that we can normalize the radicals. Okay, so when you multiply fractions to fractions, again, the rule is to multiply the numerator by the numerator of the other fraction and the denominator to the denominator of the other fraction. So in this case, since this is this has no or this is not a fraction, it has an imagi imaginary value or denominator of 1, right? So meaning to say we can multiply the numerator to the numerator, denominator to the denominator. So we have 4x plus 4 delta x times this one. So that gives us 4x plus 4 delta x. 
Now, 4x squared of 4x plus 4 delta x, multiply that by the 4x. So, we have square root of 4x times square root of 4x plus 4 delta x. Next, this one will be multiplying negative square root of 4x to this one. So, we have minus square root of 4x square root of 4 4x plus 4 delta x. Times negative 4x times 4x, so that gives us minus whole number 4x. Divide that by our denominator, which is 1 times this, is still square root of 4x plus 4 delta x plus square root of 4x. Okay, so simplifying, as we know, square root of 4x times 4x plus 4 delta x minus this one is just basically equivalent to 0. So what we have left is, I'll just be writing it here, huh? So we have delta y is equivalent to 4x plus 4 delta x minus 4x. So I'm just writing this one and this one. Okay, divide that by our denominator, which is 4x plus 4 delta x plus square root of 4x. So as you can see in our numerator, we can still simplify by subtracting this one. 4x minus 4x is still 0. So what we have left now is 4 delta x. Divide that by our denominator, which is 4x plus 4 delta delta x plus square root of 4x. So that is our delta y. Now the next step again is to divide both sides by delta x. So we'll be dividing this by delta x. We'll be dividing this by delta x. As you know, divide uh, division of fraction is multiplying with a reciprocal of the denominator. As we know, delta x has an imaginary denominator of 1, so that gives us delta y over delta x is equivalent to 4 square root of uh, delta x over square root of 4x plus 4 delta x plus square root of 4x. I'm sorry, let's just move that below. So we have again delta y over delta x is equivalent to 4 delta x over square root of 4x plus 4 delta x plus square root of 4x. Again, we have to multiply with the reciprocal of our denominator. So we have 1 over delta x. As we know, I can just... Um, 4 delta x divided by delta x, we can cancel delta x and delta x. So what we have left now is 4 over square root of 4x plus 4 delta x plus square root of 4x. So this is already the simplified one. And if you can recall, we still have the last step, which is to find the limit as delta x approaches to 0. So when we say limits... As delta x approaches to 0, meaning to say the value, those values or those terms that, that has a delta x will be replaced by 0. So that gives us 4 over square root of 4x plus 4 times 0 plus square root of 4x. So basically, this is just equivalent to 4 over square root of 4x plus square root of 4x. And as we know, square root of 4x plus square root of 4x, since this, they have the same base, so we can just add them together. So we have 2 square root of 4x, right? And if you can recall, square root of 4 is a perfect square, so that has an equivalent of square root 2 times 2 
square root of x. Again, square root of 4 is 2. So what we have here is 4 over 2 times 2 square root of x, which is equivalent to 4 over 4 square root of x, in which we can cancel the 4. So what we have left is 1 over square root of x. And then, this is already our delta y over delta x. However, we are still finding the slope by the point, by the given point, in which, um, where can I write this one? Okay, I'll be using a different color na lang for the, for the slope. So we have delta y over delta x is equivalent to 1 over square root of x. At x is equal to 1, so that gives us 1 over square root of 1. So that gives us 1 as our slope. So this is already our final answer. So meaning to say the slope for the problem is equivalent to 1. Okay, so I hope this discussion is clear with all of you. Um, I hope you have followed through. And that's it for this video. Thank you, everyone. And have a nice day.